Hey guys, welcome to today's MCAT question of the day. As always, we'll be working our way through one of the mini MCAT practice problems found at MCATselfprep.com, the home of the free MCAT prep course. I'm Andrew George, a 99th percentile MCAT tutor, and I will be walking you through today's practice problem as if you were one of my private tutoring students. Be sure to hit pause and try this problem for yourself before watching my explanation. In an optical rotation experiment, our goal is to figure out to what degree a substance is going to rotate plane polarized light. And if you remember from organic chemistry, it is a chiral compound that is going to rotate light that is plane polarized. What we're going to do is put the chiral compound in the polarimeter tube, number five, right there. Let's discuss what's happening in the previous aspects of this experimental protocol. We're starting out with light that is bouncing in all directions. So notice here, number two, this light that came out, it could be going in this direction, could be going in this direction. It could be going in any single direction. But then we put it through this disc with slits in it that's going to cause it to all go up and down in a single direction. Now, at point number four, we have what's called plain polarized light. Now this plain polarized light can enter into our polarimeter tube, which contains our chiral compound. As it travels through the solution that contains our chiral compound, Notice how it rotates slightly in the counterclockwise direction. Once it gets through, we're going to adjust the rotation of this disk at number seven until we start to see light. That indicates that the light is now rotated slightly in the counterclockwise direction. If we don't see the light, we know we haven't rotated the disk enough yet, and we're gonna keep rotating it until we figure it out. In this case, it looks like the light rotated in a counterclockwise direction of about 15 degrees. There are a couple factors that will affect to what degree a chiral compound is going to rotate plane polarized light, such as path length and concentration. Before we discuss these in detail, let's make sure we understand the term specific rotation and observed rotation. Specific rotation is the degree to which a certain substance will rotate plane polarized light with standardized conditions of a path length of one decimeter and a concentration of one gram per milliliter. It's a standardized value that we can put in a chart to help us get an idea of how well one chiral compound will rotate light versus another. Now, if we wanna understand to what degree that chiral compound will rotate plain polarized light in a certain situation, we're gonna to wanna to use that value to calculate the observed rotation, which is the ex exact rotation you would expect under those conditions. And to figure that out, we use this equation. Now let's talk about the two factors that are, that are going to affect to what degree that rotation occurs in this scenario, path length and concentration. Path length is the length of the polarimeter tube. And if you increase the length of that polarimeter tube, the observed rotation must also increase. Think about why this is the case. If I put light through a substance for a longer duration of time, it's going to increase the amount of rotation that that chiral compound is exerting on that light. For instance, if I have a tube that's twice as long as another tube, that plane polarized light will spend twice as long in the longer tube, giving it an opportunity to rotate twice as far. I hope that makes intuitive sense for you. Let's also think about how concentration might affect the degree to which the light is rotated. If I increase the amount of that chiral substance in the polarimeter tube, I would expect that it's gonna rotate the light further because what's causing the light to rotate? That chiral substance is. And if there's more of it, you'd expect it to rotate the light further. Whenever you learn a new equation, I'd highly recommend thinking about why that equation makes sense. Why is length and concentration in the denominator and not in the numerator? These are questions that you should definitely ask yourself as you learn new equations. And if you really want to master all the most important equations of the MCAT, I'd highly recommend my 100 Most Essential Equations Mastery course. It'll walk you through the 100 most important equations that you really need to master in order to see MCAT success. Let's take a second look at the question stem. You double the length of the polarimeter tube. What happens to the observed rotation? Now please avoid the temptation to write out that equation over again. You don't even need to think about the equation. All you need to think about is the principles behind it. If I double the length of the tube, that means there's twice as much time for that light to be rotated 
by the chiral substance. Therefore, it will rotate twice as far. Thus, the observed rotation must double, making answer choice C the correct answer. If you enjoyed this MCAT question of the day, be sure to give it a like. And for more MCAT questions of the day, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and enroll in our free MCAT prep course found at MCATselfprep.com. And if you are really looking for a way to maximize your MCAT score, be sure to visit my tutoring profile page and request a free 10-minute phone consultation. I would love to chat with you about your situation and how you can maximize your MCAT score. I look forward to hearing from you soon. We'll see you next time.